Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you here. Nice to see all your shiny red faces. Um, one of the most important points, Deviant, is to have some kind of good re representation to the people outside who not yet knew, uh, know Deviant. Therefore, it's quite an important task to have some kind of website with all its documentation where users and developers can find what information they need very fast. However, there are usually some kinds of complaints about not able to finding what they are searching for, um, not in the correct language, or not easy to navigate and not pretty looking. So we have here Frank Lichtenfeld, who, we tell, who will tell us a bit about how we could try to improve our website. Hopefully, you will give him some feedback. Frank? Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, so, the basic point about the, this uh, launch table, as it was titled, uh, would be to, um, yeah, that I would be interested uh, in your thoughts about the website and that uh, we, <coughs> that I, um, and to uh, perhaps discuss or how, um, how much this would be possible here, I don't know. Uh, to discuss some questions uh, about the website and to uh, see uh, whether we can uh, find some um, yeah, find some ideas how we can improve it. So um, what I would like to hear is perhaps uh, from some people from the audience that are interested in uh, um, to hear some thoughts about the website and to uh, yeah to let's just say uh, what what's your biggest complaint about the website um, so who would like to say something about that perhaps yeah Joey um, it's too hard to find things there are too many different ways to get from one point to another so okay. my biggest complaint. <laughs> Okay. School. Hmm? It looks old school. Okay, um, so we have um, too hard to find some stuff and it doesn't look pretty or shiny or something like that. Some else? Yeah. Well, there's more to looking pretty than, than just being satisfying for the eye. The aesthetic part is one thing, but there's also um, other points of, of making things look right. Meaning, for example, to provide visual cues for people that they know where to click, mm -hmm. and also for, for example, colorblind people to take them into account. So there are other aspects of, of um, the visual appearance of the site than just being aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. So um, let's me let's repeat it. Uh, so we have something on on the record. Um, so there's. Um, yeah, visual appearance and layout isn't, about, isn't only about looking shiny or looking pretty, but it's also um, a point of usability, so that users, so that you have uh, visual hints for the users where you can, <laughs> where we, where he can can orientate on, and uh, visual appearance is also important for people with some kind of um, handicap like color blindness or something like that, so that uh, the uh, website is also usable for them. Other things? There's a lot of information in Debian available that is currently on uh, home pages of people, on people on Debian.org. A lot of documents have been written in the past, and there's really no good way to find the good website. Yeah, okay, so the point was uh, the, the Debian 
um, there are a lot more websites on Debian than, uh, than only the homepage, especially there are many websites from Debian developers um, on people.debian.org um, or stuff like that. Uh, there are also the whole QA pages and um, things like that. So, um, but it's pretty hard to, f to find uh, links or find any um, information about them. Um, so, one thing would perhaps be to better integrate them or to better to make it at least possible to. F to search them or something like that. So, yeah, next point. Yeah, one thing with the pages not being available on Debian.org is that it's hard to translate them. It's yeah. Hard to translate everything. It's yeah, okay. The, um, the point was uh, it's uh, want to have the, it the advantage uh, of having information available on uh, www.debian.org is that uh, there is a translation uh, framework for, the, for this. So uh, pages that are not there are mostly not translated at all. Okay, other things you want to tell us in front? Okay, um, to be a bit, a bit more specific about um, things um, with the website is So let's start with the uh, developers corner. Um, it's it's the starting website, I guess. Well, that doesn't work. Um, for the intended for Debian developers <coughs> with information for them. So um, we have a lot of stuff here, a lot of links. Um, But as you can see, the page is quite long and um, um, very, very uh, many links. So um, even stuff that is linked from here, I often hear... Um, uh, no, I, did, I didn't find that. Uh, I didn't know that it was there. So um, what I would be interested in, or can talk um, even a bit about that, um, how to improve this website um, because uh, many developers um, have said to me that uh, the Debian website isn't really usable for them. So um, there are some um, obvious things to do here um, like splitting this website in, into more um, to give the user the chance to actually address what is on the page and uh, to see where to go from here. Um, but what I, um, the, th the question is, uh, do you have um, other ideas what would make the Debian website in general more usable for developers or for contributors? Yeah. Well, I think it's a trump part, so it means most all this on the, le on the left side and basic isn't, it shouldn't really be on the developer's website because not all the developers, developers but for anyone who wants to, get, wants to take a closer look at Debian. Whether it's either developers, the CV vendors, um, okay. sponsors, whoever. Yes, so... Uh, and, the the, and, the, and the people page is, well, I'm not sure if the people page is really of any use. <coughs> yeah, um, so the point was that <coughs> Um, even many links that are here on the developers page don't really belong there because um, they might be of interest for other people, especially things like Debian organization or um, things like that, um, but are somewhere somewhat hidden here. Um, yeah. So and um, things <laughs> like the people page where all Debian developers or and all De uh, main package maintainers additionally even if they are not developers are listed um, is yeah just the D console uh, minus uh, F uh, maintainer yeah. something like that it's just the long list of names with package names attached to them uh, yeah not really uh, some sexy <laughs> let's say 
Other thoughts? Enrico? Uh, um, one thing you do with websites that isn't being done with the Debian website is doing some user analysis first and make targeted pages. Uh, we've been discussing around the table in the canteen who was the target of this page and apparently what we came out is that it's mainly useful for people who want to become Debian developers and, and so they can find all like policy and stuff but as Debian developers you, many at least around our small table with like four people uh, would have liked to find for example what's in Alfi uh, people page if you want to go to people that are known slash till alfi which is all the links uh, to all the like status page on what you do your dd karma and stuff uh, possibly like i put my gpg key id or um, email address in it and um, okay let's, let's see it. okay uh, not used to english yeah. So it's like it, uh, all those pages that tell you like if your pages, <coughs> if your packages have been built and what's happening and what's its status of your bugs and and uh, what's the graph or whatever. This is like the things for the valves that you don't find, but then you don't want to give them to like new maintainers because maybe they have no pages. And so maybe splitting by person, and then when you receive a request, you, you see who's making the request, and you add it to the right page. So for the curious, for the press, for the new maintainer candidates, for the developers, this sort of range, and then. So um, the proposal was to, um, yeah do um, more targeted pages uh, to better split the pages so that uh, you can um, yeah give uh, different uh, different users different pages uh, so that um, they only find the information they seek and are not overwhelmed with uh, too much information they don't need so like um, the Debian Developers Corner is um, many of the stuff is mainly interesting for new maintainers, and some of the stuff, especially links to useful other pages uh, like collected here, um, are mainly of interest for Debian developers. Uh, so um, to split the uh, so split the page to um, give uh, both audiences what they need and uh, don't uh, have them to bother with the stuff they don't look at and don't need at all. Yeah. I guess it would also be useful if you could log into the website as a developer and automatically have selections based on your username uh, for packages, stuff like that. Okay. Um, the the idea was to give um, developers, perhaps uh, contributors uh, too, the possibility to log into the website so that uh, links, uh, special, uh, so that links to other resources about their packages and about uh, themselves, um, like uh, the like the Debian developers. Uh, packages overview on QA or some stuff like that, so that they are pre-linked with their username, or that they see a list of the packages and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that uh, is cool, is in my opinion, is if I say, okay, what where are the websites? So if I want to find the reach, and what is the path to them? So now I just noticed that uh, most of the information really goes on the main page via right? this developers page. So it means that the main page has just uh, one of the most important links that is to developers, and the rest of the links are very unimportant. And this is perhaps not the optimal use of the, of, well, of the way it should, should be. Okay. Yeah. The paths are getting unnecessarily long and complex. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Um, he said that um, he thinks that most of the interesting stuff at all is in the developer's corner. So uh, <coughs> the link on the main page to the developer's corner is uh, just one step too much because you have all important links here. Um, I tend to disagree a bit about this one uh, because um, I think from a user's point of view most links on the developer's corner aren't really useful at all and <laughs> um, stuff like um, where I get I my ISO images or... Uh, well, but for, for example if you take a look here and say okay, you are now interested in... Um, okay, you are just in, the, in one of the subgroups we have in Debian like, um, let's say it's a very woman's group. Where do we go to? Yeah, so um, <coughs> the point was that um, one thing you can't find um, on the main page are the different um, sub-projects like CDDs or the Women, women or, uh, things like that. And um, I think that's a, that's a valid complaint. Um, um, I think this would be one point that should be really fixed uh, to give um, the user of the website more and uh, yeah, the idea how Debian really works. That there are many uh, sub projects or CDDs or uh, maintainer groups. Uh, um, so this isn't reflected on your website at all at the moment. So it's just looks like a, yeah yeah I think the the whole um, uh, thing about how to communicate with certain people or where do I find certain groups or certain maintainers isn't uh, isn't really visible on the website at the moment um, so yeah um, I will give some people more the chance to say stuff like that and then I would uh, like to go on specific points that were mentioned and ask more specifically so that we, we can go more into detail. Yeah. One thing I've been thinking about improving the visibility of the sub project is we have a news section on the front page that should include the news from the different sub projects and it only lists the, the main news at the moment. We have news pages for like Debian Med, Debian Edu, Debian Installer. Think about whether those should actually be shown on the on the front page as well, like so you don't have look at the news and you see oh the last news item is four months old okay it's not the moment because we're an announced DevCon but sometimes you find that the last news item is half a year old doesn't yeah. seem like any, anything is happening so uh, we're thinking about doing something that, about that okay so one suggestion here was to um since we have here the latest <coughs> news item on the web page um, where we um, give some um, inform uh, where the user can find um, news items, but we have a lot of more of these pa uh, these news items. Um, for example, let's take one of the yeah <laughs> 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 one conceivable problem. Um, so let's take for example the CDDs. Yeah, there. There we have. Um, let's take the active one actually. Um, <coughs> so we have a news item there, or uh, there too. But if you don't know about the project, you don't uh, you will find this. And um, especially some of these might really interesting to um, people that don't know the project. Yet, um, like, let's take this, the last news item on our Debian Met Day at DevCon 5. <laughs> okay, um, so that's uh, so one suggestion would be to give uh, to, to make it possible to include news items from sub pages or even from perhaps from remote pages since some projects have their own web page that isn't uh, hosted um, on this server. Um, but that could easily be made possible via um, SS fees or something like that, stuff like that. So to give other, to give sub projects and groups the possibility to introduce new, include new news items on the web page, on the main page. Yeah. 
other um, general stuff you would like to mention before we go more into detail? If we're showing news, I think we should really look into splitting user news and developer news. Um. Okay, yeah. So um, the suggestion was um, if we really want to show more use and uh, news, and um, so then uh, we should think about splitting them into user use news and developer news since uh, probably um, if you show too much items uh, you don't uh, know which are relevant for you and so um, one could make uh, a list with uh, developer related news perhaps even um, include selected posts from developer announced there would be one idea. I think the ones on the front page it may, may use in use, but it's hard to find the development news because that's scattered everywhere. Yeah. On the website and other places. So it's not consolidate that somewhere. Maybe not on the front page, but somewhere. But on the developer's front page, for example. Yeah. 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 So um, this was the addition that um, developers new developer news, if you create such a category, um, haven't probably go to don't have to go to the main page for, uh, for reviews, uh, but instead to uh, the developer's front page in this, um, let's say, it like this. The top item here is, is an example of something that comes from a developer uh, point of view, but it's really useful for, for end users as well. So... Yeah. Um, it's hard to categorize. Maybe it yeah. Maybe it would, would be a good idea to hack that, get recent changes to uh, function to make it uh, dig into all the different uh, sub-projects and create one huge block of all of them. I think such a thing could be helpful and um, um, I don't know um, really what you are talking uh, uh, about. The, what the, uh, yeah, the different uh, sub projects each hub have more or less their own news section. Yeah. And we, we could have the get recent changes to not only look below one directory, but below all of these yeah. sub projects and get a collected uh, news section about the sub project. Yeah, that was sort of what I, I think that, that was uh, what I was uh, suggesting uh, before, and probably just in other words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be cool to have these ones also as LSS feed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, yes, cert the there's certainly the um, possibility to include way more LSS feeds and things like that on the website. There are uh, a few, but um, uh, there are certainly some um, news sections and things like that that are not covered, and that would be interesting for. I think the only RSS feeds we have are for security alerts at the moment. Uh, yes, that's yeah. probably it. Would be, it would be cool to just have on the very main page of a link like uh, get, get, get news by RSS and so you have a list of all news feeds. With the appropriate LSS. Yeah. So the suggestion yeah. here was to create, uh, to if you have uh, several um, <coughs> SS feeds for different news categories, and um, that you should make one uh, overview page where we, you can see all available ones. <coughs> so um, my suggestion. Uh, one, uh, my question would be um, on the thing, I guess it came from Franz Pop. Um, do you think it would be useful to be able to log into the website and to make it more interactive? And what would, would you um, like to have? Um, is this something you would, uh, you, uh, you would want? Um, and what features would it make um, attractive to you? That would be my question. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are some places where it might be nice to make some pre-selection. It's not, not necessarily locking in, you can just do it with cookies and just say, the members had setting for me. Like for example, which, which, which nearest server do I want to use, 
uh, if you still have the spear link that I can like where to go to uh, and, uh, and stuff like that. Okay, um, so um, he said that um, perhaps it isn't uh, really needed <coughs> to create a complete login lock system with uh, um, yeah, all the problems you have with that, like uh, maintaining the login information and um, so on. Uh, but to just uh, make it possible at certain points to uh, select to select preferences where cookies um, are similar, so that perhaps your um, your login Debian login name um, is in a cookie, and so um, links can be adapted to your needs. Um, what are your thoughts about? Stuff. Uh, there are no, we can also take yeah. I have one first thought I can have about it is well a bit more technical maybe. So now hmm. everything is in WML and it's quite static and having it kind of dynamic would be like making a CMS or adopting a CMS and whenever you make a new CMS God kills a kitten. <laughs> so you have to like pay attention <laughs> and, uh, and so is is that a viable alternative I mean are we allowed to think about possibly switching to some CMS considering also the load or um, so the question was um, the the whole uh, website infrastructure is about static web pages at the moment so uh, the question was would it be possible to uh, use a CMS instead um, and should we even should we uh, consider that? Um, the one answer to this is um, the websites should the, the most of the websites, um, especially the things that are interesting for users, should be easily memorable. So um, if we uh, want to change the infrastructure of the website, we I think it's really viable that we still have the possibility to easily create mirrors. Um, I don't I don't know that for really sure. I guess uh, with the increase in um, hardware um, performance since the creation of the website, perhaps is not uh, even that um, that important anymore because. Uh, one server can handle the load of all the mowers. Um, I don't know if that, that for sure that would be uh, have to investigate it, but um, one thing you uh, could do against this would be to uh, yeah select so if you if you would do for example that uh, find that you only really need uh, the CMS for the developers corner or something like that, you could move it to a different house or something like that so that you um, have, don't have um, don't get the conflict yet. Um, what would be my um, question? What what do you see as advantages of a CMS over the current solution? Um, like uh, name example uh, example use of a CMS that isn't possible with the current uh, stuff. Well, just because we were talking about logging in and mm -hmm. having customized pages and. Unless you want to generate a static version of the developer program for every single developer, yeah, probably not. You need to use a CMS, and and like this uh, changes a lot of the further discussion because we can choose to like not not consider a CMS now, which could maybe be sensible because there's also a translation workflow uh, which will be screwed up. And then I'm not going to propose like grouping things and categorization for the website and whatever, because then you can't navigate it or something. Uh, or if we if we think about the CMS, then a lot of new idea comes out, and I don't know what's going to happen on the next half of the both. But I mean that's that changes a lot. What's going to happen? Yeah. Okay. So. Um Oh, so, sorry, so I personally think that it's probably not a good idea to think about the CMS right now. I mean, I'm not just pushing for it. Okay, yeah. So um, the example advantage uh, would be things like lo uh, let users log in. Um, since uh, 
it, uh, you have to create some kind of CMS for that and um, you could uh, really use a real one instead of writing your own. Um, so, but the, what he also mentioned was that um, if you choose to use a new infrastructure like that, you get a whole bunch of new possibilities and new ideas. And so it's um, the question whether we should discuss this really here because uh, you get whole two different discussions about what is possible or what would you improve uh, now or something like that. And, or let's change the whole infrastructure and then look what uh, we want to improve. So um, those are two very different discussions and it's the question whether we should uh, risk to miss the, uh, uh, yeah, to, um, yeah, well, well, confuse them. Well, I, I really want to warn of something because I really think it's very dangerous to believe it's easier, easier if you have a CMS. I even think it's more, more difficult to create some web pages because uh, well, this list is definitely not the best, but with a CMS it would be possible to adjust it to single users, but that doesn't mean that we, sh we shouldn't have a console once in. Even, even worse, we must, have better, we must know better how it should look like in every combi a single combination. And currently, also we have a lot of dynamic pages, like the developers over you, that just, well, at some uh, place like Q8DO, mm -hmm. they should probably be better implemented here. I don't disagree about that. Uh, but I, don't, but I really don't think that we need a, 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 a CMS uh, and, uh, right now. And we have a lot of more important problems that we could be easily solved with the current situation, like the, I would really say, say this long list of, of links that almost nobody finds. Um, users don't complain that they don't find a link to the Debian installer, which is here, but of course very important to users. Definitely, Sasha was asking, well, the most often asked question on the Debian user, uh, uh, user channel in German. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. He, um, he warned about um, that if you, for example, uh, switch to a CMS or use a CMS additionally to the static uh, web pages, you will um, not only get a, a whole bunch of new possibilities, but also of, um, yeah new things you have to care about and um, for example if you have the dynamically curated pages you have to make sure that uh, <coughs> if the user chooses something uh, it, it still makes sense you have uh, new combinations and you have to ma um, have to maintain um, more content in this regard so that um, mixing the content uh, still makes sense um, yeah, and things like that. And uh, so the suggestion was to first look what can we uh, fix with the current solution, uh, like splitting up developers' corner, um, or things like that, which are easily possible without the CMS. Yeah. So I think all this discussion leads directly to to a very important question, which is how do we want to work with the website? What are what are the criteria for splitting up things? and how do we want the navigation flow to look like. And I think Enrico was, was onto something very good here. Uh, he spoke about use cases. And the fact is that nobody really knows how people use the website at the moment. And I think we discussed this on the mailing list also, and um, somebody suggested to look at logs and other, other things, and I suggested that we should try to uh, deduce from the current website the use cases that we are supporting now and look at those and see what we are still missing. And after that, it will be easier to consider the technical solutions, for example, to choose between the current system or a CMS or something completely new. Okay, so the suggestion was uh, to um, really try to analyze um, what use cases there are for the current website by, for example, analyzing the logs um, and to learn about learn more about uh, how the users use the website currently so because this will give us uh, a better idea about what uh, things we need to change and uh, what things we need to adapt and that gives perhaps gives us gives us uh, more information about uh, yeah the use cases the whether we uh, 
should it need really a CMS or, uh, or if we can uh, implement these, uh, these things the users want uh, with the current uh, solution. Yeah. Um, to come back to the logins uh, problem, um, I think it might be useful uh, to get uh, the different pages like the QA developer page, like EDU's page about the build demon uh, uh, use and, and such, uh, which could use some sort of preceding uh, to easily click through and not having to insert your data all the time there. Um, I think something that we would uh, include such, uh, <coughs> there's very much linked in a QA developer page already, mm -hmm. cross-linked to the various other stuff like the testing script and the Lintium uh, reports and such, but these things, I guess, need to be incorporated even more, and this could be, this maybe could be done through a single login page, but on the other hand, like with the Lintian pages, we already have the list to click through from all the developers, so it, it's not really needed to be a dynamic thing, uh, like PHP or whatever, uh, to, to get this thing uh, done. Yeah, so uh, the point was um, the, the obvious um, advantage of a uh, login or th uh, something like that would be that you can um, use the, the, the other information pages um, like uh, the Debian developers packages overview um, faster since uh, the, the pages already know who you are and uh, what are you probably looking for um, but the di uh, and uh, you can even think about integrating them more into the main website um, but this doesn't mean really that they have to be uh, dynamic or something like that because let's take uh, the Lindian page it's uh, it's a static page, but, but uh, you can, since you have all the um, sorting you probably want, uh, want uh, it's not really um, you, um, needed to to make it uh, dynamic or uh, something like that, but uh, only to give you the directly the link to the page you want. Um, so yeah, so. Um, Really, uh, I think we can uh, take two points from here. Um, the question whether we want uh, another infrastructure or an additional infrastructure like a CMS should is probably ca can't, probably can't discuss here uh, in all the details, um, or at least not in this uh, in this talk. Um, but we should certainly uh, think about that. And the other interesting thing is really to uh, yeah, try to find out what users want from the web page and how they use that it. So um, the basic problem is someone someone needs to do it. Um, so um, I will uh, certainly <coughs> take that with me and um, also mention that on the mailing list and discuss it there. But if someone uh, has already ideas how to do it or who should do it, um, feel free to uh, contact me and uh, say this to me, but I don't think it's uh, needed to do this uh, right now and in the audience. Um, so, um, wait, okay. Um, where to go from here? So, are there other things uh, you still have to add to this point? I have a quick question. So, uh, generation of one static page per, develop, uh, per developer is 
a possible alternative. Like, I log in and I'm redirected to a static page which has been pre-generated with all my links. Yeah, um, so the question was um, if, uh, so uh, the, the, uh, the question was if it's uh, an alternative to yeah, try to use static pages for now, let's, uh, let's say for the login, so that you have only one CGI and then you are redirected uh, to static pages again. Um, which are pre-generated for each uh, Debian developer. Obviously, that uh, is a lot of stuff that we will no, uh, never use. Um, I don't know. Uh, sounds. We have examples for um, things we do this way. <laughs> Let's take my own page, packages.debian.org. I guess uh, most of the pages are never seen by anybody. <laughs> It's like uh, 100,000 packages, uh, pages for each binary package we have in the archive. And um, <coughs> yeah, not for each binary package, but for uh, each, ver each version uh, with all arches on one page at least. Um, so um, the question, the, the thing is if you um, go for a dynamic solution, you obviously um, get um, more possibilities, and uh, you also don't have to use uh, your CPU cycles for things that nobody ever will look at. Uh, the disadvantage is in the case of the websites, uh, the, it's more difficult to mirror them, or you have to choose which parts you want to mirror, which parts should be static. And um, obviously, you also increase the load on the server, but if you can handle that, that is not a problem, but that needs to be investigated and thought of previously. Yeah? Well, I mean, part of the customization, for example, adding a <coughs> login name to links to package.qa, they have an org or something, could probably be done with a JavaScript if you find someone who can do JavaScript, <laughs> JavaScript and cookies. So you don't really need to have a dynamic, uh, you can have the pre-generated sort of, and if you don't log in, you get the generic link. If you have JavaScript disabled, you get the generic link. But if you somewhere have a login page, you could do that. And you could, for example, fold stuff and have yeah. dynamic stuff to hide things. Okay. You could probably do that if you, if you find someone who's good at JavaScript. Yeah, so the suggestion was um, if you really choose a solution, uh, or if you, don't, if you really don't want to have dynamic um, pages right now, like a full-blown uh, CVS, uh, it would be possible to create some something in between with uh, yeah, a login page and then uh, give the um, user of the website the chance to um, adapt some <coughs> things uh, with uh, cookies and uh, JavaScript, for example, so that uh, if you are identified to the web server, um, the page, the, uh, a little JavaScript on the page adapts links for you. Obviously, it will, it won't work if you have JavaScript disabled. But you will have at least, I guess, most people these days uh, browse with JavaScript enabled. Um, W3M doesn't support JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You give uh, advantage only to a specific group of users, <laughs> uh, though probably a great, um, um, yeah, great part of them. Yeah. yeah. So that would be a solution that still um, fits into the current infrastructure, but uh, gives the user some more value. Yeah. More thoughts on that. Yeah. I'm not sure. I came a bit late, so I'm not sure if this already been covered. Yeah. But uh, I'm in the Debian EDU sub project, mm -hmm. and we maintain our own web pages mostly because the format on the current Debian web pages are not for humans, and we want that something that the translators and contributors without uh, Debian developer status where they could add information. <coughs> so we started with the CVS version that we could commit to our CVS. And we moved on to a CMS 
uh, later on, clone I think it's being used now. And the CMS story has not been a success story because the access rights are not been properly configured, so very few people can actually add the information there. And we were hoping to get uh, infrastructure for handling translations, and it didn't really work out. So we have a complete mess on the website at the moment. So you should be very careful, careful going to CMSs and hope that this will solve anything. They might just create new problems. Yeah. So um, the story is that um, he is from Debian Edu um, sub project, and uh, they moved to a CMS because they. Uh, didn't, because they didn't like the current infrastructure here, especially the import format and uh, what, what contribute uh, and the possibility. And it was too complicated for <coughs> non debian developers um, to contribute and for the translators. And, and they moved to CMS. Um, Plone was mentioned. Um, that is probably the used solution. And um, there have been. Uh, big problems with it because uh, the access rights didn't work like they wanted and the translate translation stuff stuff didn't work uh, out so um, this tells us that there can be even more problems if you, you um, go for a CMS and not not only more possibilities so one should plan this uh, step really careful before actually doing it so that you don't have, end up with something that's worse than the current solution. Um, okay. So if there is no, nothing more to this point, um, um, So um, one thing I was um, thinking about was um, how to make, uh, yeah we have uh, already touched it in previous discussions, how to uh, make the sub-projects more visible and um, how to yeah, better show the, the whole yeah, structure, let's say, um, of the Debian community and um, what I I um, I was interested in if you have uh, more thoughts about that. Uh, so my idea was that uh, we try to create um, um, a, di a separate page for um, sub projects and um, groups and things like that, so that we um, don't, don't, uh, don't so that we don't hide them in the developers corner like right now um, and. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, this was just an idea for, for me, but and I would be interested if you have thoughts on that or not. <laughs> okay. Are there any things you want to add to this? Um, something. Okay. Um, that seems not to be the case. Um, so, for. Another thing that uh, was also mentioned very often um, is for the layout, the usability. Um, Excuse me, I've got a question, but uh, a formal point. Yeah. Who will maintain these pages? The uh, Debian uh, website uh, group or this project? Or each project? Yeah, uh, okay. That's, so there was uh, indeed a question uh, to the point of uh, making a separate page for groups and um, teams and sub-projects. So uh, the, que the question is uh, how to maintain this. Um, I think the over obviously the list of uh, projects that are links from there has to be maintained by the web team. But I guess um, each group and each uh, team has um, it's their own decision whether they want to be on the main website, like most of the CDDs are uh, currently, or um, if they want to have their own pages, uh, like Giving Women has. Um, so that should be really uh, left to them. Um, 
uh, and we sh should basically um, try to give them the possibility to present himself. Um, other thoughts on that? Okay. Would it be able to, would it be possible to uh, import uh, stuff from CVS maintained by a sub project into the main website so that you would have uh, a, a distributed uh, access rights management for the source? Like to do the doc for example. Yeah, so the question was uh, would it be possible to? Um, still include stuff that is maintained somewhere else, like in a different CVS or in a different uh, VCS, so some people might prefer Subversion or Dax or Arch or something like that, but to still include it in the, in the web page, like for some projects. Um, and that's um, easily be possible, so we do that. <coughs> Uh, so we um, do that, this already for the um, all the documentation stuff, with is maintained in the different CVS and the uh, of even doc, and we still include it in the uh, web page, so that's possible. Um, the only thing one has to consider is whether to uh, choose different layouts or try to integrate them also in the layout of the main page. Um, uh, to consider the translation work. Yeah, to, the translation uh, framework has to consider it as well. So, do you want to use the one uh, of the Debian website, or do you and want to be integrated with this? This isn't the case for Debian Doc right now, so we don't have really experience to include other CVS into the same framework, um, but should be possible. Um, or do you want to uh, maintain translations on your own, so like DeviantDoc does uh, currently, because they have very, it's very different to translate the web page from translating a whole uh, documentation. <coughs> Other thoughts, questions? Okay, thanks. Um, we currently have a lot of things on our web pages, so I think moving them to separate subdirectory is definitely improving the situation. Even if perhaps some of them, do, uh, first, uh, some first step moving is possible. So I think you should really should, should, uh, should just do it as soon as possible. Okay. Um, he basically <coughs> said um, so um, that we should do this, uh, do the splitting up for, uh, of some of the crawler pages, like developers corner, um, is really a good thing thing to do anyway, so we should really do this uh, fast. Okay, um, um, let's make uh, a little, uh, so, yeah, it has been uh, about an hour right now, so um, if you want we can make a short pause so that the people that want to go to the other talk that's starting at 11 and um, at the a uh, big auditorium can go there and that we can perhaps uh, take a little nap of fresh air and things like that. Um, would it be um, needed? Would you like that or would you go on? Okay, I don't see, don't, don't see objections but I see agreement so that let's make five minutes. Um,